Okay, so in Houdini, there's a million and one ways to do the same thing. But in this tutorial, I want to show you how I go about spreading fire across a ground plane. So let's jump right into it and get started. First, we're going to drop down a grid. Let's dive inside and increase the rows and columns quite a bit. And let's turn on wire shaded view. Now let's drop in a draw a curve node. Let's change the projection to the ZX plane and look at it from a top view. Let's turn on the handles and draw a curve like this. And then another from this side. Now let's drop down a carved node. And we're going to turn off the first view and turn on the second view so that we can grow the curve from zero to one. Let's turn it to zero at frame one, alt, and click in the input box to add a keyframe. Go to frame 48, slide it to one, alt, click, and add another keyframe. So now if we play it, we have our curves growing together. Now let's convert these curves to geometry by adding a polywire. Increase the radius as well as the divisions. Now I want to convert this to a VDB. So we'll do VDB from polygons. And then straight back to geometry. Now we'll add a group create node. And the grid is going to go into the left side and our path into the right side. And we're going to change the group name to path. The primitive type is going to be points. We're going to disable base group and turn on keep and bounding regions. And this is going to be our bounding object. So now if we scrub through, you'll see that the points from our path are being highlighted. To separate them, let's drop down a blast node. And the group is going to be path, and we're going to delete non-selected. So now we have the geometry from our ground plane being um, booleaned from our path. Next. Let's uh, drop down a configure bonfire node. And it's right here, pyro configure bonfire. We can delete the base. I'm just going to move this over. Pipe the blast into the pyro source. And if we leave it on surface scatter, you'll notice that the points are jittery as the path is expanding, which I don't want. So to fix that, we'll change it to volume scatter. And now they stay perfectly still. So if we go to the end of the flow and hit play, You'll see we have the fire growing, growing along the path that we drew. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to stop this in here. And let's talk about shading this in Redshift. So back at frame one, I'm going to add another grid, which is the same size as the first grid we made. And this will be our ground plane. Let's change this to fire. And this will be our ground. Under the shop section, we're going to add a redshift network. And this will be our fire. And then let's add a redshift material node for our ground. For the ground, I'm just going to turn off the reflection and make it a little darker. 
inside the fire, I want to add an RS volume node. And this is going to go into the volume. Now in the out level, we're going to add our Redshift render node. Under IPR, I want to turn on live SOP level updates so that when we make changes, we can see it reflected in uh, real time. Let's see. Let's also add a camera by control clicking on the uh, shelf tool for camera. And what else can we change? The samples are a little low, so we can make those 64 for the min samples and 128 for the max. We can also turn on global illumination so that our fire will illuminate the ground. And that looks, that's looking good for now. So let's go back to our fire. And there's one thing we have to do, two things we have to do um, to get this to render with Redshift. The first is to, is to turn off the pyro look node here. And then in this uh, SOP solver for the fire, we're going to right click and choose allow editing of contents. Double click to dive inside. And we need to turn off this pyro post process. We'll disable that. Now let's let it play for a little bit. Okay, we can pause it there because the path is fully grown. Go back into our camera. Let's turn the lock on and get a better angle. Now, with fire selected, let's go to render and add the material, which will be fire. And under ground, we're going to go to render and add the ground material. Now we can go to the render tab, select camera one, and hit render. And you'll notice we don't see anything at all because we need a light. So let's add a Redshift light dome. Let's turn off the background so it's not pure white. And for the volume contribution scale, we're going to change that to 1. Go back to Render View and hit Render. OK, so we can at least see the smoke now. And we need to dial in the shader. So let's go into our fire shader. Under emission for the channel, I'm going to type in temperature. Make sure you spell it correctly. And let's add some color to this. So this will be red. This will be orange. This will be yellow. And this will be white. And let's try and render this again. There we go. Let's just shift these sliders around. And we'll continue dialing, the, dialing in the settings. I'm going to bring up absorption and the density. I'm going to increase the scale of the emission say three. Under the advanced tab, I'm going to increase the shadow density to three. And let's keep adjusting the color. Instead of making this pure white, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. Now 
Okay, so that's looking good. Back in the scene view, I'm going to turn it to frame one, and I'm going to change a few settings on the fire itself. So in the sob solver for the fire, let's increase the decrease the voxel size to increase the resolution. And I'm going to increase the buoyancy scale so it rises a little higher, decrease the dissipation, and increase the shredding. Another thing I'm going to do is add an HDRI to our light dome. And you do that here under dome map. And once you have that loaded in, I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And let's click play and resim this. Okay, for the sake of the tutorial, we'll pause it there. Go back to our render view tab and hit render. Now you'll see with the HDRI, we have a really nicely casted shadow and the fire is looking a little bit better, but let's dial that in some more. Mess with the scale, you keep that at three. Bring the absorption up a bit. Okay, and there you have it. That's how I spread fire across a ground plane in Houdini.